My name is Kevin Alexander. I'm a, I'm a welding instructor. I'm actually program leader at Tomosin College in Victoria. I've been there, been there now for probably 16 or 17 years, so teaching trade, trade school. Uh, I don't know, I guess the, they didn't think I was fast enough, but uh, I had one coach, Bill Monroe, said, you might not have foot speed, but nobody ever catches them from behind, so <laughs> I don't know. It was just You know what, really, it's um, like all your records, it's a good team, solid team, good line mates and, and guys that you play with. You can't do that kind of thing on your own, and, and I didn't do it on my own. I had good Bob Cool and players like that uh, helping me and, and passing me the ball, and, and I get lucky with a few shots. I, I don't know. I guess there's a little bit of that that you might be born with to some degree, but it just comes from watching the game and studying the game and learning the game. And I, I'm a believer that a good peripheral vision is something that I don't know if you train yourself for that, but you've got to see almost behind yourself when you're looking forward. And that's one thing that I always had good vision I could see. And you can see things developing and anticipation. So, yeah, a little bit of it's, you know, there. But you, I, don't, I, don't, I never really worked at anything. I always had fun playing lacrosse. So it didn't seem like work to me, but uh, yeah, it just kind of did what happened out there. Yeah, oh yeah, I practiced lots. I was the first guy at practice and last guy off the floor kind of thing, but I didn't equate it as work, I guess. It was just fun and I liked to do, to do that kind of thing. And if things weren't going perfectly, I wasn't ready to leave yet. You know, you can't, can't go to sleep knowing your stick's got a hook in it or something like that. So, uh, you know, you keep working until it's good. Well, it's probably the most important thing you have. I mean, your stick is an extension of your hands, and, and if you don't know what it's going to do, you can't predict what you're going to do. And in lacrosse, that's A number one. And I've done, like I said, thousands and thousands of sticks. I string sticks for people. I've strung sticks for people all over the continent. So I know, like, I can look at a stick and tell you what it's going to do and how it's going to do it. It's just something that I've done for a long time. Well, you know what, it, it, I was a, a you know, solid player and I could shoot, I could shoot good. And uh, you know, they give you a chance to play, they were short players, obviously, and, and they needed guys to go and the junior A's were busy, so I was playing junior B at the time, I think. And uh, they picked me up to play for four or five games and you know, it, if you can shoot, you can shoot. And, and guys, you know, I, there's respect out there. I had two big brothers out there too, kind of watching out for me. but. Uh, you know, it's uh, the guys, they're not taking cheap shots at you and that kind of thing. They make you play honest, but uh, to, to go out and you, the, you let you play your game and good things happen. I played baseball, played very good baseball. Actually, we had some great baseball teams uh, as a Babe Ruth uh, baseball team. We went the World Series kind of thing. Uh, so good, good baseball, played hockey and, and that kind of stuff and a lot of hunting and fishing. I, Keep busy, I always did, yeah. Uh, just high school. Soccer was never uh, one of my favorites. I played goal when I played soccer, actually, in high school. But it wasn't, not enough action in that game for me. I don't know. I think, you know, lacrosse, and I heard 20, I totally agree. He's like, if you can play lacrosse, you can play anything. There's not a game you can't play. And it just teaches you a lot about life in general. It's just, uh, it's a tough game. It's not easy. I mean, you go out there, you got to work, and you're going to get hit and bumped around and take your lumps just like you do in life. And it's, it's a good game. You learn. And back when, when I played, it was I was fortunate because, when, like I said, I was 15. I was playing with guys that were 30. So you kind of teach you how to grow up and grow up on the right, on the right tracks. And uh, that's kind of what I got out of lacrosse that way. I don't know that I really did have one particular guy. I mean, I used to go and watch, you know, whoever's playing in town, if the Adnacks were playing or New West was playing, you'd watch their best players because I knew who all the Victoria guys were. Uh, so you'd watch. I never got fixated on any particular guys. There were certain guys that you would watch and see how they scored their goals and what they were doing to get themselves open and that kind of thing. But uh, I don't know that I could really say that I had one guy that I really, really thought was my favorite. 
I think you really you take stock of everything that's in front of you and the closest guy behind you kind of thing. And I'm looking if if you got one guy to beat, you got to think about where the next guy's going to come from. And if he's coming from there, then I should be able to pass to his guy. You know, the defense is now, I'll be honest with you, are quite a bit more sophisticated. But uh, you know, and our goalies have their tendencies. That's one thing that you really know if a goalie's weak in a certain spot. And I always tried to, you know, I never had a favorite spot to shoot. And I, didn't, I never thought that was the right thing because if you've got a favorite spot, then you're going to shoot there. I just, I could tell when things were going good because you would go in on the goalie or on your defensive guy and you don't even see him. All I can see is net. When, you, when all you can see is net, that's a good night and, and the ball is going in pretty good. Goalie doesn't exist. Like if, there's a figure there, but that's not, I'm not looking at him. I'm looking by him. And then I just hit that spot and life's good. Yeah, I would, I would say that that's probably true. Uh, it's just sometimes you just, a lot of times guys will go down, and I, I see this all the time now, they've predetermined in their mind where they're going to shoot, whether the goalie's standing there or not. And when things were going real good, I probably wouldn't make my mind up till I was about halfway through my follow-through, halfway through my shot. Now, I'm going to shoot there, or I'm going to shoot there, because at that point, I see the open spot, you hit it. And when things are going good, that's how, how good it goes. Other times, if you're struggling, then you might pick your spot early because you need to go and make sure you can hit your spots. Ah, they're all good goaltenders, but I remember when I was a little bit younger, but Joe Como was always a tough goalie, to, tough goalie to score on. He was a big, huge guy, played for New West, but I was just a kid playing against him. Got, didn't get a pocket full of goals against him, but and, and Dave Evans was another good goalie, solid goalie, a little bit older too. Most of the goalies my age, they were all, you know, they're all sharp goalies. And I wouldn't blame goalies if, if, if you're scoring a bunch of goals, it's generally uh, a little bit to do with the defense as well, right? I mean, I think if a guy's in on a goalie by himself or close to himself, he should score. And that's, that's his job. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that until I read it in the paper the next day. It was kind of funny. Uh, but I, when I thought about it, yeah, I guess I did. And yeah, the, 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 uh, and I'm, I said I, I was, didn't want to go back there again for the third year. And uh, yeah, first time I got on the floor, got the ball scored. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I think so. I mean, you obviously need the support of your teammates. Like, if you're on a weaker team, the team isn't going to succeed as good, and you're not going to succeed as good. Uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, you're like you're as strong as your weakest link kind of thing. So when you play on good teams, you're going you're gonna to be a better player as well. As far as luck, I don't know. I mean, you might get the odd bounce here and there, but uh, luck is when you're not getting hurt, right? I mean, if you can stay healthy, good things will happen, and, and you, can, you can play the game the way that you're able to play the game. When you get hurt and injuries at times, that's unlucky, uh, then it changes the game. Uh, well, I've played a lot with Bob Cool, a lot, lot with him. A little bit with uh, Jim Lynch, he was another good line mate. Uh, Dave Loudon, he was like the anchor of the defense on our line back then. Those guys, and guys like that, Norm Baker, guys like that as well. And a lot of them really you played with right from Pee Wee or Bantam right on up. And odd time, a little bit, guys that's a little bit older, they'll be a, a year apart. But you kind of you get to know everybody, right? And you, like, you, you know what the guy's gonna do because in Victoria, we're pretty close it's a smaller city we're always whatever we do on or off the floor and when you know what a guy's going to do off the floor you pretty well know what he's going to do on the floor so it kind of it, it all kind of worked together oh yeah totally there, and honestly i don't you know you hear about teams well these guys hang hang together these guys hang together it was never really like that you know we were pretty much all all together when uh, when victoria guys did stuff and and it's lacrosse, so there's a fair bit of partying more often. And it's a summertime sport as well, right? So, uh, but I mean, you kind of do that because if you're playing and you odd time you're playing on the weekend, you know, everybody else is out barbecuing and at the beach and the lake and that stuff, and you're going to a game. So then you hang out after the game and you kind of go from there. Uh, I did have a lacrosse nickname, a bit of a story on that one. My nickname was Spanky. And that, that was given to me by John Grant, actually, uh, on a field lacrosse trip uh, when we had a field team back in, like, early 80s. And it, it actually, it was in reference to one of the characters on Spanky and our gang. Uh, he gave me that name. But 
the name was wrong. It stuck forever. The name was wrong because the, the dark guy in the trio, his name was actually Buckwheat, but he gave me the wrong name and it stuck. <laughs> yeah, John Grant's one of the best. He's one of the funniest guys that I ever met. And uh, he was one of my lineys actually in field lacrosse. Really fun guy, good lacrosse player. I don't know. It just it was a fun thing we all did and, and it was a, you know, it was a game. You know, it was, uh, for us really, it's kind of changed now, but we were playing the game for fun. And there was never going to be a pot at the end of the rainbow. It was, you know, nobody was getting rich at it. And there's a bit of money there now. But when we played, we didn't play with that in mind. You know, hey, we're not going to get rich when we're done this. So you're out there having fun. And that's kind of what you did. And you, every once in a while you say, hey, this team's not too bad. We maybe should get a little bit serious here. And we would. And, and you'd have some success. But uh, it was just a good bunch of guys. And you go out there and have some fun. It's like I say, it's a team sport. And you do it. Like even when you retire, like I retired, I quit playing, or I, I said, actually, I said I quit because if you retire, guys come out of retirement, and I didn't want to come out of retirement. But uh, yeah. no, you, uh, when, when you retire or finish with a game, you don't, I mean, you miss the game, but you, really, you miss the people. That's what you miss the most, the players. Well, at that, at that time, and still, I guess, it's, you know, that's the biggest trophy you can win in lacrosse, the highest level you can attain, so... You know, you kind of, I guess, if you play lacrosse, that's a goal. So it's a goal that we made and made it with a bunch of good guys, once again. And it was good because we had, uh, we had probably, I'm going to think, four or five guys that had played for a long time and hadn't, hadn't won one, right? So it was nice to win it for them, guys like Rand and that. And uh, they'd been battling a lot longer than we had, so it was, that was a good part of that. That was fun, and an uh, extremely talented team. Um, I, I think uh, back at that time, in the MILL it was called, uh, before the NLL, uh, they had a, like a league rule that they could only have like three or four Canadians or something on the team. But Johnny Meridian, being the guy, he, he knows how to, when he looks at the rule book, what the rules are. And we had a bunch of, uh, of, 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 the, of the native boys playing, uh, native guys, Darius and Rich and, and a bunch of guys from back there, they counted as dual citizens. So that really made our team a strong team. And we had like some super, like probably on that team, I'm going to take a wild guess. But today, as I sit here, there's probably 10 or 11 Hall of Famers that were on that team. Uh, like Troy Cordingly, Jim Veltman, John Tavares, Darius Kilgore, Rich Kilgore, and goes on and on, Randy Mearns, <laughs> a lot of great lacrosse players. So we played the, like the first half season. It was only short seasons. They were like 10 game seasons or something like that. The first half season, we lost the first three games because they played a little bit different style of American guys than that. But once we figured it out about halfway through the first year, we never lost another game for a year and a half. So a real strong team. No, I just played the two years in Buffalo, uh, the 92 and the 93 and actually I'm the oldest living Bandit alumni player. <laughs> well, I guess the, at that time uh, there was a Canadian team and the US team and I think Aussies and, and England, uh, field across teams. Uh, they were, uh, went, we went to LA to play as a demonstration sport in the Olympics. So there was a, a tournament, it was like about a 10 day tournament uh, just plans to kind of to introduce a game uh, so people, uh, the executive and Olympic people could have a look at it. I, I believe that's what the goal was, uh, to see some lacrosse. Uh, I think we won most of our games. We usually, we had a tough time with the Americans back then. Uh, I don't know that we ever, I don't think I ever was on a team that beat the Americans in field in all the years, I, four times around that I played. Uh, but we were okay with everybody else. That's a question I get asked all the time. And really, uh, whichever I'm playing, I like them both. And I really didn't have a favorite. I think whichever one I was playing at the time was fun with me. That was a, a, an exceptionally good field across team. Chris all assembled it in like 1980. Uh, and we were very well organized. And in Victoria, Everybody bought into the field program. So we had, uh, we had Shamrocks playing. Probably we had, uh, I'm going to guess, six or seven Shamrocks. 
another six or seven junior A lacrosse players, guys like John Crowther and Jim Lightbody and those kind of guys. So we had some highly, highly skilled lacrosse players and we all bought into this field program that uh, Chris Hall and Jim Hartshorn came up with. And uh, we started in 1980. I don't think we lost a game for about three or four years. And, uh, and it also helped. In, in the end, that, that's the program that uh, put most of the, a lot of our guys on a Canadian field lacrosse team. And it's now, you know, it's still, you look back, that's why guys in Victoria are getting through on scholarships and all that kind of stuff, uh, is, is directly from that. And it was an extremely strong team. And we, we traveled a bit, we traveled all over the place. And, and to tell you the honest truth, we were actually better than I thought we were when I look at it. And we used to go to tourneys, and I could never figure it out why we would win tourneys. And, and American teams would bring in all these imported guys, um, from all over, uh, you know, all American guys from colleges and, all, and, and club teams and that. But I never figured it out until I actually started going to field lacrosse tourneys where the teams were pickups. And it takes us right back to where we started earlier where if I know what a guy is doing away from lacrosse, I know what he's doing in lacrosse. And our sea space team, we all knew each other. We played together for years and years. And that's why we had success. We knew where to be when that ball's going there, I'm gonna be there, he's gonna be there. And I, I saw that after I saw pickup teams in the tournaments. That's why we had so much success. Yeah, I think it was actually. Bobby Allen put me at midfield because uh, we had good, strong attack anyways. And I took most of the face-offs anyways. So as a face-off guy, he kind of left me up there. And it actually worked out okay for me. I liked playing the midi. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was the lowest weight I'd been was ever for years too. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I was surprised, but I guess you know I had some pretty good games and, and did well at the, at the face-off. So yeah, it was. A, it was a fun. It was a nice work. I don't know. I not really. There's not a whole lot that I changed. I, I was a little bit disappointed uh, when we were in Junior B. I think it was like 1973 yeah, or two or three or something. We won the provincial title and the Saanich organization wouldn't send us back to play for the Canadians and that still doesn't sit well with me because uh, we had a good team and it would have been nice to have the whole <laughs> set 